I ran a marathon and I got this medal. Let's talk about it. Get that go one more hoodie out. Oh, it's looking fresh. It's so comfy. Uh, okay, so I ran a freaking marathon. So this video is gonna be about me running a marathon, uh, that process, what it took, uh, and how intense it was. I'm not gonna show any footage from the marathon. That is coming. I'm making a bigger video about like my whole journey and so a lot of that marathon footage will be in there. Today is just really gonna be me chatting with the camera and I'm gonna give you a behind the scenes look into this, this medal right here. If you saw on Instagram, um, I posted a picture with this medal. It's so sick and I'm gonna tell you all about it. But first, let's talk about the marathon. So if you've been following along this journey, you know I was going into this marathon injured. Uh, I had a problem in my left foot, wasn't sure what it was, went to the doctor, and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. <laughs> oh, the dad humor is extraordinary. And this is how you know I have a toddler and I'm losing my freaking mind. All right, so that is not what the doctor said. The doctor said you should not do this marathon. So naturally, I went and got a second opinion from a podiatrist, and the podiatrist said you could do the marathon if you walked most of it and barely jogged. Basically, a yes, and that is what I wanted to hear, so I went with the podiatrist recommendation, and, uh, and I ran this thing. So for the marathon, um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about like what I took as well, in case, uh, you know, cause the title is like how I ran a marathon. So I figured I'd give some insight into like my plan and my, my supplements that I took, um, which, you know, perfect that I'm wearing my Go One More hoodie because I took all BPN supplements, Bare Performance Nutrition. Um, in the morning of, I started with some In Focus in the morning, right at like, uh, you know, I woke up at 3.45 and had some in focus about 4 a.m. Had some breakfast, it was just a bowl of oatmeal. Uh, and then I had my pre-run mix, which was two servings of G1M Sport and one serving of Intraflight and a half scoop of flight. I know it's not really recommended to have flight before a cardio session, especially the mother of all cardio sessions, a freaking marathon, but I just needed something to like get me amped up, so I just took a half serving of flight. It's not that big a deal. You know, just a, just a little taste. <laughs> I was gonna do a motion with my hand, but that's that would probably be deemed inappropriate. Might even get flagged on YouTube. I don't know, but you know, if I say just a taste, you know what I'm, you know what I'm, you know what I'm, in, you know, what, you know what I'm do. <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm freaking delirious still. Like I can't believe this happened. That's the biggest story of the day. Like I, it's so surreal to me that I went through something so physically traumatic. Like. You guys, I I did not like finish this marathon like a hero or something. You know, I was broken down. I was crying. I cried probably five times at least. And not like, you know, single tear wipes. No, 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 no. I had full freaking meltdowns. So back to the day. So I had my I had my little pre-mix drink, uh, drank that up, and then we started the race right at about six. I think it was like a little after six, six ten, something like that. And the first five miles truly felt amazing. Like my foot was there was like a mild, a dull pain, if you will. And then it was like I all of a sudden at five miles, my pain just like woke up and was like, oh yeah, hey, we're supposed to be hurting. Let's, come on, let's do this. And my foot just like blew up. It was just, it was in so much pain. So then I had to start walking at five miles, uh, but it already set like a good pace, you know, those, those first five miles. And so it was like pretty cool. But then I started walking at mile five and it was, uh, it was downhill from there. Uh, I, had, I had set up, with uh, one of my BPN ambassadors, um, K 
Casey, she had sent me like a whole uh, breakdown of like what I should do and like how I should, you know, pace myself, especially at the beginning of the race, so that way I didn't like hurt myself. Well, I was feeling a little good, so maybe I didn't do exactly how she recommended I do. And she's a run coach and she's run so many marathons and I, sh I, I should have listened. I started listening after mile five and I was like, wow, my foot's really hurting. So then I went to much more of like a, a walk a certain portion, jog a certain portion, walk a certain portion, jog a certain portion. Even if I was feeling good, I would walk a certain portion just so I would ensure that my foot was gonna last the rest of the race because I'm telling you, it was brutal. So then we get to mile 18. Oh man, mile 18 was awful. I, I literally had a breakdown where I sat down on this bench out in the middle of nowhere. I was by myself and I had a meltdown. I had a psychological breakthrough, okay? Like I was sobbing uncontrollably, okay? Tears, snot bubbles. <laughs> That like all that shit, that's what I was doing. It was bad, it was bad, it was bad, it was bad. And it, I feel like I have trauma from that mile 18. Anyway, I feel like, yeah, mile 18, that was the closest I ever came to quitting the marathon. It was, it was bad. It was really, really bad. Um, you know, after 18 miles, I, I like I wasn't just like walking normally and I wasn't jogging normally. Obviously, because of my foot, I was like jog limping. And so it was like pounding on my right foot, pounding on my right foot because I was trying to ease off of my left foot. And so my hips, my left hip, my right hip, my back, my shoulders, my neck, everything was just, you know, you run 18 miles on a limp where you're like pounding on one side of your body. It's, it throws everything off because everything's connected. And it was just, it, it was brutal. It was, I, I don't even know the words to describe it, but it was the most pain I had ever felt. So I sat down for like five minutes, um, maybe 10 minutes. And I just, I had, a, I had a good old fashioned sob fest. And then I started talking to myself. And then not only did I start talking to myself, I started going through some of the comments that people were sending me because I was live posting on my Instagram stories. So I think people really got a kick out of like literally being able to see me run the race with me basically. And so people were sending me comments along, along the race and um, that was very helpful for me. Uh, <laughs> like reading all these words of positivity when I'm literally in the lowest point of my life thinking I'm gonna quit this marathon, um, you know, it was extremely helpful. I just kept telling myself like, I had already spent most of my life living in a way where I would just quit as soon as it got hard. Now, I would never been through something this hard, but it was just another instance where I was going to quit when it got hard. And I could not handle that. I could not, I know the regret would have been so massive if I quit there. And not only that, like I'm out in the distance, like I'm far away from anybody. So like, I kind of have to go. Like I, there's no Uber that's gonna put, pick me up on the side of the road here. Cause I'm like in this like ravine thing. You know, I'm not e anywhere near an access point for someone to pick me up. So there is no real quitting. I literally have to walk myself out of here. So if I have to walk out myself out of here anyway, let's freaking just get it done. So slowly I start, you know, getting up and, and, and walking it off. And then eventually a mile down the road, I start to jog again. And then I have to walk again, but then I start jogging some more. And then I walk again, I start jogging some more. And eventually I'm at mile 24, I'm back to like the starting point. I have to run past the starting point and then right back to hit the 26.2 miles. And so I, I get some more fluids in me. I see all my family there, my son's there. I can't even interact with anybody because I know I have two miles left. If I take one more second to like say hi or be nice or you know, whatever, kisses and hugs, I can't do that. I still have 2.2 2 .2 miles left. And so I have to like kind of ignore everybody. I, I take one second to like glance at my son and he looks at me and he just smiles and Man, I'll never forget that smile. Um, it, you know, because I was in 
the worst pain of my life. And so seeing your son smiling at you when you're going through the worst pain in your life is just so motivating to keep going and to finish the job. And, uh, and I did, I was able to run out those last two miles and I just got this surge of energy, you know, from, from seeing my family and, and knowing that I'm a mile from the finish line, a half mile from the finish line, a quarter mile from the finish line. It's like, I just have to go, you know? And I was running faster than I had in a long time. And I actually, I got a little sidetracked. So I was supposed to, supposed to run out like 1.1 miles so then turn around and then come back. So it was like 2.2. But I actually, I ended up running one point, like three and a half out and then coming back either way so because of that i'm on my way back to see my family right i'm supposed to like mathematically end up finishing the race right at where my family was and i freaking mess it up because you know i was delirious the sun was beating down on me i'd run 26 miles already and i'm just like ugh and i messed up the math and i, I hit 26.2 miles on my gps and I still have at least 0.3 miles to, to run to get back to my family. You know, they're sitting down there, they got the all the cameras out and everything. They don't know I messed up the math, so if they see me walking, they're gonna think I'm walking to the finish line. I can't have that, you know? Can't be seen doing that. So it's like, <sighs> I guess I'm not running 26.2, I'm running 26.5, basically. So I just, I <laughs> kept running and, uh, and got to my family and, and, and holding, holding my son at the end of running 26 miles was, man, it was, a, it, was, it was one of the best moments of my life. And for nutrition, it was pretty simple. I was having honey stingers every 45 minutes to an hour. And then every hour having another serving of G1M Sport. Um, besides that, I was also in my water, I put, um, intraflight in in all my water sources and also i had i had water on the course just like plain water so um you know i was getting a ton of electrolytes a ton of sodium uh and, and a ton of carbs you know along the race which is obviously super important and i probably took enough carb sources but i think i needed more electrolyte sources for sure i needed uh more g1m sport than i actually took in and that was a, a definitely a lesson for me because like i sweat a lot more so i need to be replenishing that, that sodium, um, you know, quicker uh, and, and more frequently. So yeah, that was that was a good takeaway. And I think, you know, find, find something that works for you. I think G1M Sport is the greatest endurance supplement ever. Like, I, I mean, it, it literally got me through this marathon. I could feel the difference. Like when I was, I think I was at like mile 10 and I had, my other serving of G1M Sport, I was just like, I felt like I was like born again because I was so dead and it just like resurrected me, you know? <laughs> Not to make it sound like a religious experience, but uh, it was a miracle. <laughs> now let's talk about this guy. So Nick Garf, who's been following me for a long time and now has become my friend, uh, he, he reached out to me when he found out that my marathon got canceled. He said like, hey man, I'm really sorry that, that your marathon canceled, but I, I heard you're still gonna run the race. And I was like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm absolutely gonna run this thing. Like, no matter what, I'm finishing this damn race. And he was like, I love that mindset. I love that mentality. Hey, I'm gonna make you a medal because you're not gonna get one because your race got canceled. So I'm gonna make you a medal. And I'm like, what do you mean make me a medal? Like, how? Because I don't know how to do those things. You know, I'm not like crafty, handy like that. I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> and he does, apparently. I mean, he, he made this. Like, like he, like he, like he cut this and then sculpted and welded and sanded and, you know, you know what I mean? I don't know how to do this shit. <laughs> suffering ceases to be suffering at the moment it finds a meaning. Viktor Frankl. That is a great quote. Okay, well, okay. <laughs> well, um, it's in a sock.
It's literally, it's in a sock and it has a chain because this thing is freaking, oh man. Nick, you killed it. You killed it. Wow. P.S. Ryder will want to work out with you soon. Some of my fondest memories with my dad were lifting with him in the gym. The iron is where so many times we found common ground. God, Nick. There's not, there's not people like Nick in real life. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like he's out of a movie, but it's like, that's amazing. What an amazing thing to say. Oh my God, look at how, would you just look at how cute these are? Would you just look at how cute these are? Dude, little Ryder, just, you know, mm, mm, mm. he could probably start curling these. He's so strong. I was just gonna keep the message on the back to myself, but I I'll read it, I'll read it. It's a, it's, a, it's a very sweet message, it's a powerful message, so I think it, he, you know, it should be heard. To Tony, artifacts are what bind us as a culture. They get passed on through the generations. I am honored to be a part of your journey. Keep inspiring, brother. Like, that message about artifacts, like, I love that, I love that because this to me is an artifact that I will always have, that I will cherish greatly. And it's just like, it's incredible. Like it's something, it's literally freaking metal. And like, it's so, it's so perfect for, for what that marathon stood for me, you know? And, and, and what I had to become. I had to become ironclad in my determination to finish this stupid race. Like, it, you know, 26.2 miles. I used to be 406 pounds. It doesn't come naturally to me, especially, or to anyone. And so to finish something like that, you have to be ironclad. You have to be welded together in your mind. Your, your mental state has to, it has to be impenetrable. And it just, it means so much to me that like, I didn't pay him to do this. You know, like he did this on his own. And it just, it motivated me and it was very flattering and it was so incredibly nice. And I'm just so thankful to Nick for this. It's a beautiful piece that will always, always live prominently in my gym. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Nick, thank you literally from the bottom of my heart, having a medal to signify what happened a few days ago is just like, crazy because it's so surreal to me to have something that shows yeah I completed this man that feels great it feels great and I will have that for the rest of my life so thank you Nick please go follow Nick I've uh, put his Instagram below please go give him a follow and uh, and give him some love give him some love all right so that is the video again I, I hope as soon as next week I'm gonna have the footage from what was captured at the race and I'm gonna make a basically a short film about my journey from obesity to marathon. Uh, but I just wanted to get you guys a video and, and, and kind of give you a little insight into like what I was going through in, in the process. If you have any questions about the marathon at all, please put them in the comments below. Hit me up on Instagram, Focus Fight Finish. I am here every single week on Wednesdays, uploading a video to help uh, you, know, you along your journey, however I can. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see ya in the next one. I'm gonna go ice my freaking feet. <laughs> oh, yeah, the recovery, the, the recovery's real.